think uh, three short examples is better. What I'd recommend is you have maybe in your first example, it's a walk and talk, like two or three characters walking and talking so that you're showing you know how to carry a conversation, which is what 90% of most cartoons are, are characters talking. So I want to show that in a fun, interesting way. You want to show a little bit of action because most shows have some action in it. Most kids shows are action comedy. That just broadens your net. They're like, oh, they can do action too. Great. You know, maybe it's at a studio and they're like, okay, th this other show could take them. They'll pass your portfolio around. So you, you want to show both of that. And then um, your, your three examples should have a, a little bit of all that in it. As for showing designs and how you thought about it all, for TV, that doesn't matter as much because we have a uh, layout artist and uh, it's fun to look at, but not as important. I think that's more important in feature where you could have your storyboard and then you show how you thought about the world because in feature, it's all about your individual personality and like your, your filmmaking style. So you want to get as much of your personal style out there. So that ma matters for feature, not as much TV, just give me a single panel, give me three short samples. In short, I mean like a hundred panels. Don't, you don't need to do like some 400 panel opus. Longer is worse. Animatics, you don't need to do that. I wouldn't do that at all because working all day and then at night, okay, time to review these. I don't want to spend five minutes watching your short. I, I just want to go through a few quick panels. I think each person we review, they maybe get 45 seconds where we'll look at their stuff. It, it's pretty quick. So you, you want to have stuff that's short and is easily digestible. Well, for TV, it depends on what you're trying to break into. If you want to be a revisionist, uh, I just care about your drawing ability. If you're a revisionist, you're not going to be thumbnailing. You're a revisor. You get red lines from the director. So I want to see how well you can draw. And uh, if it looks like you can take a red line, which is a, a red scribble that the director would draw, and you'd be able to put it on model and make it look like the show. That's really what I care about because that is going to save me time. If you can't draw, if you have great thumbnails and great storytelling chops, but you're drawings aren't there, then you aren't going to save me time and I probably wouldn't hire you, even if you have great storytelling visually. It's really all about the drawing when you first try to break in. One, one exercise you could do is you take a character, maybe an original character, or if you want to practice some character you love drawing and draw them 10 times and every angle you can imagine, upside down, flipped around, twisting, fighting, whatever. If you can do that, then then you're starting to be able to understand how to draw uh, and understand the forms, the construction underneath. What I'd recommend is I'd go on uh, whatever kind of their big cartoons are right now. I'd look up the credits of the storyboard artists and then I'd find them online. And then I'd check out their work and their portfolios and uh, I'd try and hit that. That's kind of the people they hire and who they like working with. That's probably what you could expect your boards to look like. I found, you know, different different places will have different kind of in-house styles and it's because the artists there will all network and they all know each other and they start drawing a certain way, especially, you know, between comedy and action and action comedy. The storyboards all look really different if you compare Voltron to Loud House. So knowing where you're going to be working or applying and then catering your boards towards that uh, would make sense. What, it, what I'd focus on too is just uh, your drawings making sure your drawings are really solid. I'd recommend having three examples. Try and do the three examples in 120 panels. They don't have to be super long. Not, not long, good. <laughs> and it, it's good for you too, because I'll be honest, the first example you do, when you're done with it, you're gonna wanna redo all of it because you'll have learned so much. So if you keep them short and you finish it, you can move on and create a new example. I, I'd say maybe the first example, try and do it in 40 panels, you know, 25 panels, something just super simple. And then expand from there. 
and then keep generating examples because when you get into professional TV boards, you throw away so much and you start boarding so many episodes, you realize that it doesn't matter. You don't have to be super precious, but what's important is the mileage. So keep those samples short. You'll generate more, you'll get better quicker. Yeah, you can. One thing to consider is if person reviewing the portfolio has seen the film or not, if you're able to do it and they don't need any context to understanding it, then sure. Yeah, uh, if it can stand on its own. However, personally, I, I'd try and stay away from that because they might have something in their head like, oh, I've seen that film, oh, I hate that film, or uh, you don't know what people will think. I think it's better if you are able to come up with your own story, something simple, usually with a physical dilemma, something like a cat uh, being chased by a dog or you know a squirrel trying to get a nut from a hard part of the tree. And if you're able to tell that story in a really clear way, that means it's gonna be visually driven. So I think that's a good rule of thumb for doing a board. It also changes, I think, between feature and TV, feature boards, they're looking for different stuff than TV. TV is more like, hey, they can draw it technically really well. If it's script driven, they don't care about your writing as much. If, if it's board or outline driven, they're gonna care more about your writing and uh, like your voice, what, what they think you're gonna bring as a creative. I mean, you should keep whatever makes you laugh and, and you think would be impressive you, you usually want to keep this stuff i think pg i wouldn't fill it with anything too gross or, or maybe mean or that might limit what you can apply to if you're like ah, oh an opening for puppy dog pals time to turn in this portfolio but i have a few sex jokes in it you know they're they're gonna see that and be like what so if you do have your own personal stuff in it i try and keep it keep it more generic that, that's why i recommended you know chase scene with a dog and a cat because you know it's generic it's uh, everyone can relate to a dog and cat there's no hidden meaning behind there or anything keep it simple like like a chase or, or some kind of action if you can clearly show you can tell a story without any words that means you're a good visual storyteller and a good board artist so try and try and keep it simple like that you know if i were to do a story right now in my office Maybe it's about me doing a Zoom call and I'm really hungry and I can see food over there <laughs> that I left on the counter and I'm trying to be, you know, in the Zoom call, but I'm trying to eat at the same time. And that, that could be a story and you could expand upon that and make it funny. And it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to win a, an Oscar. You just want to show that you can tell a story quickly and, and in a fun way. And I, I'd keep it simple physical com conflict yeah the best way to display your portfolio online for me and i think a lot of directors in modern tv boards is you have one panel and i'm able to click through it and kind of watch it in real time well the timing of me clicking through it the reason that is is because with Programs like Storyboard Pro, Flash, Photoshop, whatever, uh, boards have gotten to a place where an animatic is almost expected to be a full, fully fleshed out thing that we're able to send overseas. So I want to see how it how it plays and, and I want to see that you know how many drawings to put in there and if you're using the right drawings and it, you watch it and you click through and you can tell like, oh, I get it. Like I, I can tell the flow and everything. I know some people will like it all displayed as a big box. But I'd argue against that nowadays, even because you're looking at everything on the computer. I don't think people want to get like real close and look at the big box of panels. You can see the shot choices that way. Honestly, most people prefer the single panel. Uh, one, one thing you could do is single panel and then beneath uh, a row of boxes showing your uh, different shots. Yeah, they're the same. Even when you send out a test for boards, there's no difference between a revision test and a storyboard test. 
maybe some productions have done that, but in my experience, I've never seen a, a difference. Yeah, and when you're applying, just apply with your storyboard portfolio. They should be able to tell if you can do the revisionist job through that. I think you have a better shot in TV. Personally, I, I after doing both, they have huge good things and huge bad things feature. It's gonna look amazing. Like whatever idea you have is gonna be beautiful. But a lot of the boards are left on the cutting room floor. I mean, I worked on that Rumble thing. At the time, it was a completely different movie. Probably everything I worked on for it, and that was for half a year, will never see the light of day. If you work in TV, your stuff is gonna get seen because they don't have time or money to afford to lose. <laughs> and uh, just, you know, cut whole months of work away. I, I think uh, that's one big benefit of working in TV is your stuff will get made. Easier to break into, too. Um, personally, as a storyteller, I like a lot of the stories being told nowadays in TV. It, it's amazing. The adult animation world is really booming. There's a huge amount of, you know, rated, mature type adult shows being made. And those kinds of stories are kind of fun. I thought Frozen 2 is beautiful, but I don't think I'd want to work on it. That's not the kind of story I want to tell. If you'd ask me to donate two years of my life towards it, half of the stuff I make will be cut anyway. It, that's a lot to ask from an artist. Like, if you're really passionate about it, go for it. Personally, I, I like TV and it's, uh, it's booming right now. As a disclaimer, I've done two jobs for feature. And I haven't reviewed feature storyboards, so I'm not a, an expert on the matter. I've taken classes in feature boarding and I have been on two productions where I worked as a story artist. I'd say the people that I worked with and um, if from the portfolios I've seen where they got a good reaction, it's always uh, pretty clear right away, like, oh, this person's great. <laughs> you know, they have a great cinematic eye. They're using um, really deep shots. They uh, are telling a story from a point of view and maybe have a unique spin on it. They're funny. They, they're able to do a lot of different things and show it in that storyboard example. I think again, for feature portfolio, you'd want to have the single panel and let them click through it. But for that, I, I'd also include the squares of the panels, you know, like four by five squares, just like one or two of those to, to show it. And then maybe underneath that, I'd have designs and you, you do want to show your thought process for feature. I'd, I'll stop talking about that because I don't have the experience. I, I think you have a better shot in TV. Personally, I, I after doing both, they have huge good things and huge bad things feature. It's going to look amazing. Like whatever idea you have is going to be beautiful. But a lot of the boards are left on the cutting room floor. I mean, I worked on that Rumble thing. At the time, it was a completely different movie. Probably everything I worked on for it, and that was for half a year, will never see the light of day. If you work in TV, your stuff is going to get seen because they don't have time or money to afford to lose <laughs> and uh, just, you know, cut whole months of work away. I, I think uh, that's one big benefit of working in TV is your stuff will get made. Easier to break into, too. Um, personally, as a storyteller, I like a lot of the stories being told nowadays in TV. It, it's amazing. The adult animation world is really booming. There's a huge amount of, you know, rated, mature type adult shows being made. And those kinds of stories are kind of fun. I thought Frozen 2 is beautiful, but I don't think I'd want to work on it. That's not the kind of story I want to tell. If you'd ask me to donate two years of my life towards it, half of the stuff I make will be cut anyway. It, that's a lot to ask from an artist. Like, if you're really passionate about it, go for it. Personally, I, I like TV and it's, uh, it's booming right now. As a disclaimer, I've done two jobs for feature. And I haven't reviewed feature storyboards, so I'm not a, an expert on the matter. I've taken classes in feature boarding and I have been on two productions where I worked as a story artist. 
I'd say the people that I worked with and um, if from the portfolios I've seen where they got a good reaction, it's always uh, pretty clear right away, like, oh, this person's great. <laughs> you know, they have a great cinematic eye. They're using um, really deep shots. They uh, are telling a story from a point of view and maybe have a unique spin on it. They're funny. They, they're able to do a lot of different things and show it in that storyboard example. I think again, for feature portfolio, you'd wanna have the single panel and let them click through it. But for that, I, I'd also include the squares of the panels, you know, like four by five squares, just like one or two of those to, to show it. And then maybe underneath that, I'd have designs and you, you do wanna show your thought process for feature. I, I'll stop talking about that because I don't have the experience. I, It's crazy, especially the action shows. Like if you've seen the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, some of those boards are so posed out. And they're beautiful, they're awesome to watch. Some of that comes down to the board artists. If they have a really specific action or something in mind, they, they wanna take it to that level. If you look at those boards, the drawings are usually really rough and simple. They aren't gonna be fully detailed or anything, uh, which is great. That's the way it should be because they're giving a lot of information about the action and timing. It depends on the show you're moving on to. If you're on a primetime show, you do need to pose it out quite a bit and it does need to be detailed. If you're moving on to an action show like Ninja Turtles, kind of that simple, really clear shorthand technique is, is pretty common. I'd say uh, it depends on the show you're, you're moving on to, what, what they expect. A lot of shows have what's called a timing director and and they still do this where they take X sheets and you don't you don't have to time anything. The timing director will add all the little micro movements and stuff from from uh, the storyboard. Uh, that job is starting to get phased out now. So more and more of that work is put onto the storyboard team and uh, it depends on the production you're on, what level of, of posing they want. If you're able to show in your portfolio that you can pose to that level, it's not a bad thing because it, it means you, you're able to do it and you're able to think, how will this come back animated? It shows you, you understand the full process. It's a storyboard pro. Uh, it's what most shows use. It, it has a, a little learning curve. If you know Flash or TV Paint or you know any other program, you'll probably get the hang of it pretty quick. It does have a few quirks and a few uh, tidbits in it that once you figure those out, uh, it, it runs great. Uh, Photoshop is used mostly in feature. The, the reason what is it, Toon Boom Storyboard Pro is used so much in the industry is it has a lot of export options that allow for production to conform stuff, create stuff for overseas. You can export PDFs, you can export images with tracking so the editor can easily create animatics. So it has all these built-in features that make it really good for TV animation. A few shows use Flash or a, what's now Adobe Animate for storyboarding. I've used it before. It isn't bad. The drawing tools aren't great in Flash, but you aren't able to export things with panel numbers and scene numbers with the audio and all that. It's a little bit tougher for production. There's workarounds if you build your pipeline around that. Um, I'd say Storyboard Pro is the best. If you don't have access to that, you know, just any drawing program. Get used to drawing and um, I hate to say it, but having a Cintiq set up with a dual monitor is kind of the best way to go using an iPad or something without a dual monitor. You can do it, but you want to have reference up that you're able to look at, at all the time. So, I mean, if you had a Cintiq and an iPad, all that costs a lot of money, which stinks, but a Storyboard Pro as well. Uh, I think you can do a like a trial period for a month, maybe a week. Now, I've done that before for small jobs. I'm like, oh, I'll sign up for a week. <laughs> do a few things.